Tati Sheena, you know, you're just famously black, you know? <laughs> She's played TV's funniest ladies for decades, but tonight, Tashina Arnold is our comedy queen. I'm a black woman living in America. I know how to do this I probably have never seen a full episode of anything that I've done. I was the same age as that young girl, and my dad just lost the gumption for being a police officer. They even stopped asking me for selfies. Do you know what people want? That question sucks. That's gonna be your promo for the Carlos Watson show. That question sucks. <laughs> You can't live in this world today and not be curious. In fact, if ever there was a time to hear from more than the usual suspects, it's now. This is The Carlos Watson Show. Maybe we'll surprise you. Maybe you'll be mad at us sometimes or inspired. Not only do I hope people will see more with the show, but I hope they'll do more and be more. People, the good stuff starts now. Tashina Arnold is a wisecracking star of both stage and screen. Who began her show business career at the tender age of just 11. She's best known for her roles on the 90s hit TV series Martin. Get out of my yeah. way! Everybody hates Chris. Chris. And now, CBS is the neighborhood. How long have you two been seeing each other? Uh, I don't know, maybe like two 73 months. days! But as her fans will tell you, she's just as entertaining off screen as she is on screen. Hey! All right now. How are you today? I'm wonderful. How are you? I'm better. I'm better now. I'm better now that I'm here with you, which is good. <laughs> Where are you? Are you in New York? I am in Los Angeles. I'm in anywhere town, Los Angeles. And uh, I am um, chilling. I'm, you know, I'm in quarantine. I'm, I'm loving it. Uh, I'm actually in the middle of healing right now. I had an operation, my third foot operation. So I cannot walk. I'm in a wheelchair. Wait, are you, are you serious? You want to see? Let me see. I am in a wheelchair. That with is no, crazy. With no pants on. I have no pants on. Come on, I don't believe that. Now, when did you start getting funny? I mean, like, if I had met you at 11, like, were you funny even then when you first started doing television and, and, and Broadway? I've always been a goofball, man, always. Like, me being a goofball got me out of being on punishment with my mom. Like, literally, I got less spankings because I was funny. <laughs> Where did you grow up? Jamaica, Queens, New York. I love you New Yorkers. You New Yorkers will never say New York. You say Jamaica, Queens. And if I keep asking, you got, you, I mean, you'll tell me more. You'll tell me what street. You you'll tell me go the whole with thing. You got to You got to go with your borough. <laughs> I love that. Who are mom and dad? Tell us a little bit about them. This is the best way I can describe my parents. If you close your eyes and you, you hear them, you think my mother is an old Jewish woman. And you think my dad is an old Italian mafia guy. My dad uh, was a police, uh, is a retired police officer, and my mom is a retired sanitation worker. So when when it would snow in New York, I remember our phone ringing off the hook because they knew that my mom could send the salt trucks in to clean their street and get rid of the snow first so they could go to work. So <laughs> my mom was like a star in her own right. <laughs> I and love my that. dad, he worked at Fort Green Projects, was known for being a you know, pretty not easy place to live. And uh, my dad, everybody loved him. My dad was that, that's why, you know, with this whole police brutality and stuff, it's sad to see the world change to that. Uh, but my dad was that guy who literally would take my toys after Christmas. He would take a few of my toys and say, okay, daddy gave you this, but daddy needs to give this to somebody else because this little kid needs it. Tashina, how did you get into acting? I mean, how does a young black girl, 11 years old, in New York City, who doesn't have big, rich, fancy parents, um, how does she get a chance to, to pursue her passion and, and, and develop her, her skill? Well, what happens is, is that your mother wakes up one day and says, listen, I can't lose another day or miss another day of work. 
taking you on your auditions. I'm going to show you if you do you really want to do this? And I'm like, yes, I really want to do this. So by the age of 12, I was a latchkey kid. I, my mom gave me a key to the house, showed me how to take three trains and a bus to the city and back, and then showed me how to do it with my sister because I had to take my sister with me as well. But that's when I knew she knew I really wanted it. And so since 12 years old, I have been pursuing my, my career of what I love to do. And what would you tell your younger self or what do you tell young people who want to become actors, who look at you and say, it feels like she has had hit after hit after hit. I want that. I want to be able to move people like she moves people. What do you know about how to entertain, about how to act? Are there a handful of things that you would tell the young Tashina? There's one thing that I tell everybody. You better love it. You better love it. Because when the entertainment industry or the business of show does not love you back, you can handle it. I've been blessed with people that have just helped me. You know, help me sustain who I am as a person. Help me, you know, being a little more confident when I walk in on the set. <laughs> Everything I do is through the eyes and the spirit of a Black woman. And that's all I know. I always have young Black women in mind because that's who I was. And I, now that I am a woman and I'm raising another black woman. I have a daughter, a 16 year old daughter who's going on 25. Please help me. Please help me. Please help me. Um, but I'm so grateful to that because I am who she aspires to be. So that's a huge responsibility. So that's how I live my life. That's how I, uh, I'm able to handle this industry. What if anything can you teach other people about how to not only dream big, but realize those dreams. The moment happened when I was three years old, and I remember this. There were a bunch of people in the church, and they were singing. And I said, I looked at my mother, and I said, Ma, I want to sing. And my mom being the mom that she is, she said, my daughter wants to sing. So she told the elders to you know, call me up. They called me up and I, and I remember her giving me the mic and all I remember was seeing all of that crowd out there and everybody's eyes were on me. And the moment I felt that control, cause it did, it felt very, I was like, whoo, this is crazy. Like if it just, you know, some people shy away from it and I tried, I sang my ass off as best as I could. <laughs> because I just, I loved the attention. I loved the attention, but I never forgot that feeling. And I never wanted to disrespect that feeling or, or pretend that that feeling was because of me. Uh-uh. That feeling was God made a way for me to be a vessel to speak and relate and entertain people and feed the people. Feed the people, you gotta feed the people. Th that's interesting. I think part of what I hear you saying, and it's, it's, it's a whole interesting conversation around mindset too, is that you equate dreams with stuff that's not really gonna happen. And in your mind, these things are gonna happen. It, other people would hear the idea of being a major television actress as a dream. And you'd say, no, 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 that's what I was looking forward to doing. And so I did the work to do it, right? Other people would say. I'm gonna give you an, I'm gonna give you an example. We had a preacher come to the church and this is when I was, it had to have been like 13, somewhere around there, 13, 14. And he made everybody stop. He said, everybody stop, stop. Every, and so we're like, oh no, what's happening? And he said, I want everybody to, everybody to stand up. And everybody stood up and he said, Tashina, come here. And I was like, oh no, what did I do? He called me over, he stood me in the middle of church and he said, I want y'all to pray for this young lady because she is going to, she's going to minister to millions. And I, after it was all said and done, I was like, I don't want to be a preacher. Cause I thought he meant 
that I would become a preacher. It wasn't until I was home and I was watching an episode, I think, of uh, Everybody Hates Chris came on. And I said, oh, my God, that's what he was talking about. The millions of people were the television audience. The millions of the people were those people that not, most of that church will never, ever get a chance to minister to, that I would get the opportunity to minister to. So that's what my, my, my being an actress, entertainer, singer in, in, in the industry is me. That's my ministry. I think if you look at your life, not as a dream, but what is your ministry? What are you called to do? What's in your spirit? What is in your spirit to do? What is it that you want to do? You may dream. That's cool, the dream, but how are you actualizing that dream? Who do you admire in entertainment? I mean, clearly you have had not only a ton of success, but you probably have had exposure to lots of different people. And for whatever combination of reasons, who are one or two of the people that you really admire, whether you're close to them or not, but you're like, given how challenging this is and rewarding, like I admire the way they handle their business. I love and admire Gladys Knight. Uh, number one, because when, when I started singing at the age of three in church, once I got into the world, as they would say, when you get out of church, you go into the world, um, she was the, the voice that really inspired me as a singer. Um, and then now that I'm 51 and I'm looking at this beautiful, gorgeous woman who has maintained herself, maintained her her beauty, her talent, maintained her lifestyle, maintained who she is or who she has presented herself to be to the world. I respect that because it's not easy. And especially, you know, being in the music world, the music world is it's even, that's a whole different ball game. So interesting that you say that years ago, I used to know an English singer named Joss Stone. I don't know if you remember Joss I Stone. I love Joss Stone. Joss, I love her. Fantastic, very soulful voice. And she talked the same way about singing, that she just wanted to give so much. She said that she would feel her throat on fire and that she she wanted to give it all. And people would tell her, hey, this is just a birthday party. Like, you don't have to go all out. And she was like, if I'm going to be here, I'm going to be here. You hear the same thing from a Kobe Bryant. When I would hear him talk about basketball, he loved basketball more than he loved necessarily thrilling the crowd. May he rest in peace. When you do what you love to do, you are unstoppable. Nobody can hold you back. Nobody. Yeah. They will yeah. try. But nobody can hold you back when you when it's something that you're passionate about and you love and you've committed yourself to doing. Nothing can stop it. Talking about nothing stopping it. Tell me about your new uh, your new show. Oh, we gotta talk about oh that little show. <laughs> no, <sorry. laughs> Oh, well, I'm on a wonderful show called The Neighborhood on CBS. Uh-oh, Jeanette and Tamika. You can take one or the other, but you can't take both. <laughs> I'm not bailing you three out again. Well, it looks like I'm going to have to go with Tamika, so you better behave. <laughs> Cedric and I, we have the same friends. We've been around the same circle of people for years. And I never got a chance to work with Cedric. So that's one of the reasons why I really wanted to be able to do this role and also to be on a major network. Because a lot of people didn't realize I was on a bunch of shows, uh, great shows that really had a, a, a certain amount of success. But not, none of them were on a major network. Is it different? Yeah, because literally you have a bigger, it's like being in a, in a bigger cloud. It's like having more uh, gigabytes. <laughs> you know, that's the best way I could put it. <laughs> you know, you have, more, you have more space. You have more iCloud space. You know, you have a, a bigger house. Be fearless. We can do it. I believe in you. We can do it faster. The Our Home is the Training Ground for Her Dreams policy. Ensure carefully. Dream fearlessly.
Tell me a little bit about We Win. My sister was diagnosed uh, with lupus. Um, by the time she was diagnosed with lupus, it was she had six other diseases prior to that, other autoimmune diseases. She went to the doctor, was like, all right, give me the pill, blah, blah, blah. And the doctor's like, yeah, no, 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 no. Lupus affects the African-American community more so than it does any other community. So what we started doing was we set up a hotline that people could call. Like literally my sister to this day picks up her phone and prays for people. Um, we we're kind of the, the no nonsense version of the bigger companies. We give people information that allows them to live another day. My sister, literally, the, the way she came up with We Win, she almost died. And my mom was sitting over her bed praying for her. She's like, to Zanae, you got to hold on. You got to hold on. You got to think past the pain. And she said, tell I win, I win. She just kept saying, I win, I win, I win, I win. So that's when we came up with We Win. We Win. You can get through it. I'm gonna finish up by uh, uh, by doing our rapid fire round, if you don't mind. Uh, oh, I want to know what immediately comes to your mind. What's the best impression that you can do? A kiss on the hand, maybe quite continental, but diamonds are a girl's best friend. Oh, Carol Channing. Oh. I don't do it as good as I used to do it anymore, but I used to love Carol Channing. Look at the old girl now, belly. Last couple questions. What's the craziest rumor you've ever heard about yourself? I did have a rumor that I was a madam at one point. But because <coughs> all of my friends I know beautiful black women, and I've been surrounded by beautiful black women all my life. And I had a gentleman walk up to me at a restaurant. He says, hey, so can I, how much is it to talk to one of your friends? I'm like, what the, what do you mean how much? Get money. Besides yourself, who's your favorite comedian? Oh, that's hard. Oh, that I know it's hard, sucks. but this is a good one. We're going to reshape. We're going to bring it home in the right way. Bernie Mac was hysterical. Bernie Mac is 100% real man. Yes, sir, Bob, baby. 100% man. Tashina, you made me smile. This was too good to have you on the show. You have to promise me you're going to come back when COVID's of over course. and you're out of the wheelchair. Of course. Of course, Carlos. Of course, for you. Now, I've got a little gift for you because I know you need some shoes that aren't high heels. You've seen these colorful sneakers called Cariuma. They're like the new Allbirds. They're all soft. They got like beautiful colors. So no. um, I've, I've got a pair that's coming your way. Thank you. But let me know when you get something for hot flashes because I'm having hot flashes. <laughs> Dude, I've had like 70 hot flashes in this interview. So yeah, <laughs> please let me know whenever you get something. To fix that, I'm all for it. I'm sending all kinds of good love and thanks. Thank you for coming <laughs> on. You. Don't stay Thank far you. away. And, um, and, uh, and, and gracias. Like, you just, what a great way. This is too much fun. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, and God bless you. You keep going, baby. Keep going. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hey, tune into the Carlos Watson Show. It's like no other. You're going to enjoy it every weekday on YouTube.